and I was thinking of the, of the freaking video. Uh, thank you so much, Adam. So here's the example, uh, two runners tie in a race. So they start and they, of course, race. If you're familiar with races, it's a sporting event where two people or more start running at the same time. And then whoever finishes first wins. Um, if they tie, that means the end of the same time. Uh, so uh, to understand the race, uh, show that at some moment, they, they are running at the same speed. Yesterday, I drew two graphs of what their distance over time could be for um, blue and red, and then their their speed is going to be the slope that is going to be the derivative, of course, which corresponds to the slope of their canyon line to their to their to their distance graph. So uh, the so what we're saying here, if you're looking at two points at the same time. Ooh. This is not the graph I saved. Could it be that I forgot to click save? Probably. If we're looking at the same time, the same moment in time, that means that we're looking at two moments with the same exponent because the exponent is time. So two uh, moments lying in the same vertical line. And what this problem is saying is that if I move if I move these somehow, uh, there's there's a point here where these lines have the same slope, which would mean that they're parallel. And it's probably around there. They're not quite parallel. But... Uh, so that's what it is in a picture. But um, in a formula, so let's say f of t is the the distance run by runner number one after c seconds? Let's say g of t is the distance uh, run by runner number two after t seconds. So. The thing with word problems is that you got to take that those English symbols like the words, the W and the O and the R, and turn them into math formulas somehow. Um, probably. So um, how do we make so? How do we make both of the statements? Uh, how, do, how do we make everything in the in the statement? into something about f and g. So um, for example, the statement that the, the runners start at the same time. The statement that they finish at the same time. And the statements that I want to prove, which is that at some moment, they have the same speed. So what about, um, how about I, 
I'm going to do the easiest one of these. Uh, if they start at the same time, that means that at t seconds, uh, they're both in the same moment, in the same place, like, which I could say they run zero meters. Um, I'm not sure what the best way to, to run is. I'm like 80% sure. I learned this in primary school, and yet here I am, not knowing. Uh, okay, so what does it mean in a formula uh, for the two runners to finish at the same time? How do you, uh, if, if I tell you that at time t they're in the same place, how do you write that in a formula? f of t equals g of t. Thank you, Shelby. So, um, so this is saying that at time t they're in the same place. Um, So what is the time when they're in the same place where it's the time of the end of the race? Um, uh, and I'm not told how, how long the race is, but so I'm just gonna um, call it TE for N. T T E is the for end is the length of the race. Okay, so that's two formulas. Uh, so what does it mean in a formula for um, runner one, runner two to have the same speed? One of these days, I'm going to start singing Sound of Silence, and you're going to regret it. But would it be f prime of t equals d prime of t? Uh, yes, it would. Thank you again, Shelby. Um, so what's t? Um, so before I, you make me stare at the, at the screen for one minute in silence, T is um, T is some some moment that I don't know. Um, so maybe I'm gonna call it C, so that it doesn't look like the variable. Probably between the beginning of the race and the end of the race. So uh, so now with these three formulas. Um, I can turn this into, um, well, I can remove all the words. And just uh, write down. Write, write down the formulas. Uh, so if I have two functions, uh, and they're the same at zero, they're the same at another point, is there, is there some value in there 
such that uh, their derivatives are the same. So um, what I got to do here is use the mean value theorem somehow. So um, what function should I apply the mean value theorem to? The second one? G? Is the second one G? Um, F prime is, I mean, F of T equals G of T. That's an equation, that's not a function. A function is something where I, I give it a T and it gives me a, it gives me an answer. So, um, F, F of T, F, F of T equals U of T, those are, supposedly, those are just two numbers which are equal to each other. So what function do we apply the mean value theorem to? The second one. What's the second one? It's the second one. Which? What's the first one? Isn't that what Shelby just told me? So that's an. So that's not a function. F of t equals g of t. F of t equals g of t is just saying two quantities are equal. Um, it's saying at the at time t they both run 100 meters. Um, so maybe what? So this says f of uh, 10 seconds. Uh, these are incredible runners. Is g of 10 seconds, uh, which is 100 meters. I can't really, I can't, so this is saying 100 meters equals 100 meters. Um, I, I mean, I can apply the mean value theorem to the constant function, but it's not very interesting. So the thing is, um, I, need a, I need a function. What, what functions are there? Okay. Unless I'm misunderstanding Matthew and Shelby. Um, what functions are there in this problem? So function is some, something where I put in a number and another number comes out, or maybe the same number. For example, if I put in a number of seconds, I get the distance traveled by either one of the, of the runners. <clears throat> Would they be the same function? Mm, not, they could be, they don't have to. Uh, okay, so he says f of zero equals zero, and p of zero equals zero. So again, I don't think I'm understanding what you're trying to tell me. Uh, what plural you are trying to tell me. Uh, th those are, that is saying that zero equals zero. Um, so to, to, so an example of a function is um, f, f is a function. It, 
it inputs um, the time and spits out the um, the distance traveled. So it says if If you have, um, if after one second, the, the runner has run 10 meters, after two seconds, it's 11 meters, after three seconds, it's 19. Um, that's, how, um, that's how this is a function. So that's the function to reference you. Thank you, Shelby. Uh, so, oh yeah, I don't wanna spend more time in this problem. I'm gonna tell you the answer even, uh, even though it's happened to me. So the function I want to apply the theorem to, which I think I would have gotten after a bit of trying, if I apply it to f or to g, um, that doesn't that doesn't get me what I want. But if I apply it to f minus g, so f minus g is another function where you take the distance that uh, runner one has traveled, the distance of runner two has traveled, and I subtract it. Um, of course, f minus g of t is the difference between distance run by one of them minus the distance run by the other. So if I do, so what, what do I know about f minus g? I know that, I know that what's the distance between the runners at zero? If f of zero is zero and g of zero is zero, uh, this is zero. And how far are the runners at the other moment where I know something at the end of the race? <clears throat> um, how far are the runners at the end of the race? What's the distance between them? Zero. They're in the same place. Um, so I have a function in some interval where it's zero at both the endpoints. So um, if you try to plot f minus p, or if I actually do it, it's going to, I don't know what it's going to do, but it's going to start and begin, uh, start and end at zero. So the question is, could, um, what happens to the derivative of f minus g? Is it my mouse right? <sighs> So, um, so here's the two runners and here's f minus g. So like I promised, this one begins and ends at zero. So what's happening here is that there's a point, uh, apparently it's 0.4627 in this case, where, um, where this has a horizontal tangent, that's Rolle's theorem. Um, so, um, Rolle's theorem. says that there is there is a C such that uh, the derivative of f minus g is zero. So of course the derivative of the difference is the same thing as the difference of the derivatives. So if f prime of c minus g prime of c is zero, this means that f prime of c is g prime of c, which is what we wanted. <clears throat> um, 
Okay. Uh, so, what did I what did I just say? What I just said was that if we take this point where the the tangent is horizontal, at, at this point the runners are going to be uh, going at the same speed. So if I draw the tangent lines again, point four six two seven. Here, so here the tangent lines are legitimately parallel, uh, and this is—I mean, this is just an example, but um, this is how it works uh, for any two functions. <clears throat> okay, um, are there any questions? At the end, it's always the same. Find a function, look at what happens at the endpoints, and uh, look at the formula for the mean value theorem or role theorem, and it's going to tell you the derivative is something. Um, okay, I'm going to move on. Uh, so, consequences. Uh, the mean value theorem. So, um, so what functions have derivative zero? Constant. Any others? Uh, it's, uh, so the answer is no, the, but we didn't know this until um, two minutes from now, that the only functions whose derivative is zero are constant functions. Of course, we knew that constant functions have derivative zero, but we had no particular reason to believe that it would go the other way around. Maybe we did, I don't know. I don't know what you think about things. Um, so the answer is that, so if, a prime of x equals zero for every x in an interval, then f is constant, and we can we can prove this uh, using the mean value theorem. Uh, how this goes is we say. Imagine it's it wasn't. Imagine it wasn't constant. Then we use the mean value theorem, and then we we reach a, a contradiction. We reach something that makes no sense, which means that we might have started with we we must have started with something that was wrong. So, what does it mean for a function to not be constant? What is a constant function? Same slope. I don't agree with that. Um, continue. Is it is it like yeah. any number? Any number. The constant like, function. Without a slope. Yeah, uh, uh, I mean it has a slope. It, it's zero, and it has a tangent line. It's just horizontal. Uh, a function is constant. So, so I can give you a function from a table, at least part of it. So, which one of these is constant? A function that always returns the same value. All right, Sam. So um, this this function uh, has a two in there, has ones and twos. So it's not constant because constant means that I always get the same number. 
this one seems to be always two, this one is constant, this one is not always the same number. It's not constant. So um, if f is not constant, then so what does it mean to not be constant? So if you're constant, you always have the same value. So what is the what is the opposite of having the same value? What does it mean to not have the same value? That for every x, there's a different y. Mm, I, I knew someone was going to say that. Uh, sorry, no. Um, the the one that I just raised. Um, this one is not constant, and it's not true that for every x there's a different y. Yeah, the, the the negation of everyone has the same value is not is not that we all have different values. Is that at least one person has a different value, or two people, have, one person themselves can have different value. Two people have different values from each other. Um, if we if we don't all have the same birthday, that doesn't mean we all have different birthdays. We probably, because I feel probably two of us have the same birthday, but it means that there's at least two of us with, with different birthdays. Um, um, two inputs have different output. So, um, so um, in in a formula, it, what I'm saying is that uh, there are two numbers which I'm going to call A and B, with um, with different with different value of f. So that is what it means to not be constant. Then the mean value theorem says that on the interval, um, so I guess, applied to the interval AB, says that there exists, it gives you the derivative somewhere. with the derivative equal to this formula, to so the average rate of change um, between B and A. So if the only thing you know about F of B and F of A is that they're different, what can you tell me about this quotient? What can you tell me about this fraction? Of course, A and B would also have to be different. <clears throat> What happens to the numerator um, of this of this fraction if f of a is different from f of b? Like, what do you mean by that? I mean, what, what if can it's you tell? Then it won't be zero. It won't be zero. That's that's what I mean. Exactly. It's the only thing we know. It could be anything except for zero. And if the numerator of a fraction is not zero, what can we say about the whole fraction? It's not zero. Uh, B minus A, I mean, B minus A makes, uh, dividing by that makes sense because B is not A. The denominator is also not zero. You divide something non zero with something non zero, you can't get zero. If F is not constant, then there is a C we know nothing about except that its derivative is not zero. So I said, if the function is not constant, then at somewhere the derivative is not zero. 
that means that if the derivative is zero everywhere, it has to be constant. So if you just read the, um, well, I guess um, I should have made this red. If you just read the, the red sentence, if f is not constant, there is uh, a number whose, uh, whose derivative is not zero. But if I'm saying the derivative is always zero, that can't happen. So f cannot be constant. I cannot be Dracula. Um, <clears throat> this is like if I said, um, if you if you fail this class, that means I'm Superman. Uh, I'm not Superman. So uh, that means you're gonna pass this class. <clears throat> Okay, so now you know which functions uh, have derivative zero. And another consequence. So now uh, we're moving into 4.3, which is called, what, what's it called? Uh, how derivatives affect the shape of a graph. But um, really it's consequences of the mean value theorem. So um, a thing that, we intuitively know is that um, functions with functions with positive derivative, they their slopes go up, which means they're increasing. Um, and we can prove this now. If the derivative of a function is positive on an interval, then f is increasing. Uh, so to, so I can prove this, but first I have to think about what does it mean to be increasing. So maybe I'll do some tables again. So, um, Is this function increasing? Um, so which of these functions can be increasing? What is an increasing function? The second one. Hmm. <clears throat> so this function goes through, um, so this one, it goes through zero, one, it goes through one, two. So here's zero, one, one, two, and it goes through negative one, three. So it might have this shape. And I don't think that looks increasing.
the first one looks like it's increasing. Uh, what do you mean looks like? If I plot it, it looks like, or if the, in the table it looks like incre it's increasing, and if it's in a table, uh, what about the table looks increasing? And what about the second one doesn't, if you plot it? Okay. Um, so I guess the question is, um, since I'm trying to prove something about a random function and nothing about, can't really plot it. So I need to say something about the function without plotting it. Um, so um, let's make it very hard to plot. So um, this function doesn't uh, doesn't plot nicely, but can you still tell me if it's increasing or decreasing, if, or neither? I guess. You can tell by intervals. Uh, what do you mean? Increasing, so you're saying, right, you're saying it's increasing from zero to one. Uh, and then, so here it's increasing. And then it's decreasing when I go from one to negative one. But if I go from one to negative one, I'm going from, from one to zero. Okay, I'm gonna rephrase this question in a way that um, you will care. Um, here's your band account statements. Uh, for every month, you have some money in your account. Uh, May um September. So you have the yeah, hundred, two hundred, three hundred. Two hundred and twenty. September you have four hundred. So are you making or losing money? And I, these are all the same year. So if you're making money, then this function is increasing. If you're losing money, this function is decreasing. Um, and this is a useful skill to know if you're making money or losing money. Um, maybe, I mean, I don't know, maybe, at least for me, uh, I don't like to see the money in my bank account approaching zero. Maybe you do. Um, so are you, is, is the money in your account increasing or decreasing? It increased and then decreased and then increased again. Okay, you guys, I didn't write the months in order. February doesn't go, so these are all 2020. Um, February does not go after October. 
$150 doesn't happen after 500. I'm not going to say that word, <laughs> especially on YouTube. February does not go after October. Um, so it didn't, it, you can't say the money decreased from October to February because February goes before October. So it's increasing. Uh, all right. Um, <clears throat> so how can you, so, okay. So Sam and Sydney, the, the, from now on, you're going to be the economists, the economists, what makes you think that it's increasing? What about this table is increasing? Well, if you look at the months in the correct order, and then you look at the amount of money made in each month it increases each month by a certain amount. So, for example, if you compare January and February, you have more money in February. Um, okay, so that means that if you look at a later time, you have more money. <clears throat> Um, and this is what it means for a function to be increasing if bigger input means bigger output. Uh, so that's that's a lesson. Never thought I would be uh, giving teaching a class in economics, but here we are. This is what they teach in economics, right? Must be. I should go write columns in newspapers with my opinion on money. Um, a function is increasing, a function f is increasing if whenever month x comes before month y, um, this means that I have more money after than I did before. So if you go back to um, back to this example, one uh, goes before it goes after negative one, but the function is not bigger. So negative one is smaller than one, but two is smaller than three, and this makes this uh, not increasing. Here, whenever I have a smaller number, uh, I have a smaller value on the on the other one, which makes it increasing. So, um, okay. So now back where we were. Uh, I'm gonna do the same the same mean value theorem thing I did before. If um, if f is not increasing, so the opposite of for every x and y this happens is for some x and y this doesn't happen. The opposite of everyone did their homework is someone didn't do their homework, not no one did their homework. Um, then for some let's say a and b with, with one bigger than, than the other it is not true that f of a is smaller than f of b in other words if it's not true that the first is smaller than the second 
it must be larger than or equal than the second. Uh, then the mean value theorem says that there is a C such that, uh, and again, I write the derivative of C and I write the formula for the average rate of change. So if all I know is that f of a is bigger than or equal f of b, then what I, well, this one is supposed to be all red. What I know about um, f of b minus f of a is, so you know that f of b is smaller than or equal f of a. What do you, what can you tell me about the subtraction? It's negative. Exactly, Sam. Thank you very much. Um, so the numerator here is a negative or not non-positive number. It could be zero. B minus A, since uh, B is bigger than A, this means B minus A is positive. So you, sub you divide a negative number by a positive number. Uh, this means that f prime of c can't be positive. So in conclusion, if a function is not increasing, then for some constants in there, for some number in there, the derivative is negative. So just like before, if I knew that it was always positive, that would mean that it has to be increasing. Um, because if it's not increasing, then it can't, uh, then, then somewhere the derivative must have been negative. So, um, This means that we know that positive derivative means that the function is increasing and negative derivative means that the function is decreasing, which you could figure out the same way I just did with the mean value theorem. So this is exciting. Um, this means uh, tomorrow, We'll see how we can use this uh, to tell um, local maxes and local mins apart, which is what you need to do to make sure the amount of money in your account keeps increasing. And on that note, uh, that's it. So.